so go ahead. Hi, this is Rodney Hicks, and this is your superior self. Rodney, I want to say thank you. It's like it, it's truly an honor to have you, a man of your integrity, join the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. So thank you're, you for having you're, me. Yeah, man. Um, you're so much more laid back than I thought you would be. Um, uh, yeah. You're just, you're just so ex like your resume is just so impressive. Like your website is like your playwright, actor. Um, how did it all start for you? Like, how did it, how did this happen, this, this life for you? Yeah, uh, thank you for asking. You know, I, I, I am one of those artists who knew very, very early on that this is all I ever wanted to do. And I, I since I was about seven years old, and uh, it's all I ever wanted to do. And I used to listen to original cast albums, the vinyls, mm -hmm. and uh, pretend, that uh, I would make up what I thought the story was, what I thought the book was, um, based on the liner notes. You know, those albums, you could open it up and you'd have like the synopsis. Yeah. And I would kind of fill in the blanks <laughs> with the uh, songs and the, of, of the um, show. And it really started from there. My cousins and I, we would, do uh, singing and dancing and, and skits in my grandmother's living room. And then it just led to everything after that. Like where, well, mm -hmm. where did, um, did you go to like any special school? Did it just like, did Great your question. high school, yeah, did your high school have like theater or anything like that? You know, it's interesting. Um, it was the opposite, uh, meaning I went to a creative uh, performing arts elementary school Wow. Right. That you had to take a test to get in, all of that. And I went in, I believe it was third grade and from third to eighth. And we had shows every year. And but I was one of those young people who that was my occupation, even <laughs> then, you know, and going to class was not. And anytime I was involved in the show, my grades went down really? because I gave all of my energy <laughs> to the shows. Like you couldn't tell me I wouldn't be on Broadway, uh, you know, but uh, you know, even though I came from an artistic family, uh, my, my dad uh, who's passed away now, uh, he was actually against me doing this uh, as a profession. Uh, so when it came time to go to high school, all I wanted to do was go to high school. This is where I want to go. And it was very clear that uh, my dad was like, no, you're not going there. And which was unfortunate, but um, you know, you can't go backwards, right? So um, basically I went to a school, Roxborough High School for business and communications. And, uh, you know, and it was very different there because in my elementary school, they made sure uh, it was an integrated school and they made sure that all of the musicals were integrated, you know, like, uh, like all the leads were opposite races. And then I go to high school and it was the exact opposite, <laughs> you know, and um, where I knew I'll never play a lead in this show, in this, in this, uh, mm in this school and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, and when it came down to senior year, uh, you know, where at that point in senior year, the seniors in our choir uh, who were seniors, we were of color. And that was the year the choir director decided not to do a musical. Oh, wow, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> it, it, you know, and so, I joined the drama club <laughs> and, you know, and I was able to uh, do a play through there. And then I wrote my own play, you know, I said, well, I'll write and star in this. And, uh, you know, and that's not what writing's about for me, mm -hmm. but um, I, you know, I've always written about social issues. Well, what's uh, writing about for you? Oh man, great question. It comes from someplace down deep. It comes from someplace down deep, Trey. You know, it, it, it's, I write about social awareness, social 
issues. And I always have, you know, in college, <laughs> you know, uh, I went to Mansfield University for two years and like, like school, like uh, elementary school uh, in college, I was in all of the plays, you know, and the musicals. Uh, but then I took it to another level and I was writing my own student films, wow. you know, and like, just okay who's my dp who <laughs> you know i mean i was that guy but i wasn't i loved incorporating people who weren't drama people i loved uh taking friends from the football team from the cheerleading and going hey you should be in this i'm gonna write this role for you because i wanted people to see that you know being an artist wasn't just it's not about showing off you know, it's not about see me, see me. It's about how can we help move the world? How yeah. can we help uh, change ourselves through this thing called art? So that's always been a predominant thing in my life. Wow, that's um, pretty powerful. Um, yeah. Do you feel like, you know, a lot of authors that I speak with, like they talk about, and, and with myself as well, like when I get into like a high frequency or like that's that zone, that they flow state. been tapped in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you don't, like you don't, like you lose yourself almost. Like you don't feel like you're writing anymore. Like I feel Absolutely. like sometimes when I'm in an in, in-depth in conversation with great people like yourself, like mm -hmm. I lose myself and I don't know where the words come from. Like I don't mm -hmm. know where it comes from that source. Do you ever experience that? I do. And, and you just said it, it comes from source, you know, and, and it comes from a channeling of energy because I do believe that we're all energy. That's mm -hmm. really what we are in these human bodies. And, uh, and it's just about how do we navigate it? How sure. do we manage it? And, you know, getting to a place in our lives where we are the captains of our own ship. Hmm. Do you think that we can like, create our own reality well i mean we've already created our own reality but do you think we yeah. can break that ship do you think we can bring things in, like the law of attraction almost kind of like bring things to you with affirmations manifestation, manifestation. yes absolutely yeah. um i i don't uh it's not overnight right but uh manifestation is yes putting it out there and not for a material gain that's the thing mm -hmm. it's really really sitting in what you want to manifest for your life and knowing why you want to manifest it in your life. And I believe it has to transcend material. It has to transcend, oh, this is going to be for me, me, me. It, it has to be about something bigger. And then it's patience and then it's unfolding, but it is also doing the work putting yourself out there, uh, you know, and not being afraid to not be liked, mm. you not know, be liked, not be liked. What do you mean by that? Explain, elaborate on that. Yeah. Well, you know, we move through this world, you know, inherently because we're conditioned to like me, like me, like me. Right. And I think you get to a place where you have to really do it from your heart and your mind and just be okay with, you know, criticisms, you know, because as artists, you know, you're under a microscope all the time with your art and you have to build up a resistance, <laughs> you know, uh, so that you're not like agonizing every time your art is on display in whatever way that is. Um, and so you, you really, I, I think it's just about manifesting what you want to see in your life unfold. Well, I mean, like you put, like you manifest your art and you put it on like for show for people, many people, like, how do you, like, you know, there's gonna be criticism. How do you prepare yourself for that? Right? Like, because like I put myself out there, like I, I create episodes, I, yeah. the episodes that I create are a hundred percent my creative energy, my creative, mm -hmm. my creative soul, mm -hmm. everything that comes from my source goes into my episodes because yeah, I take pride in that. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And your, your playwrights are your individual individual, how you say that that source from you that is creative and mm -hmm. some people are going to like it and some people are not going to like it. And it's just like life with people. 
right? Yes. And you yes. put yourself out there and you're vulnerable. Um, mm -hmm. What do you feel when you put something out there like that for the world? What do I feel when I put something like that out into the world? There's a sense of freedom, Trey. I mean, it just is. It's regardless of, there is a sense of freedom of, wow, I put in all of this work. And again, it's not about see me, see me. To go to my father, he spent his life he wrote a book of poetry called Sojourn in a Strange Land uh, mm. about the Black experience in, uh, in our world. And he was able to get it done in 1978. I was four years old at the time. And I remember then he did it again in 81. And I went to go see it in 81. And it was etched in my brain of, wow, he made that happen. But from 81 all the way through to the time of his death in 2018, that's all they talked about. Yeah. And it was, you know, remember when, remember when, or I'm going to get this put up again. And it's, I remember thinking, I don't want to be that person because he was afraid to ask for help artistically. And he was afraid, you know, he created this beautiful thing, but he was afraid to create more and keep going. And I just, I just said, you know what? I'm, I don't want to do that. You know, I want to be able to just keep going, keep creating, keep creating. And even if one person sees it, then that's okay. You know, but um, yeah. Wow, that's, that's an amazing answer. I mean, yeah, I mean, so living in the past, right? Like living on your last thing, you're living on your last thing and, and, and you, right? Like, was there, like your dad didn't want you to, to go to that school. And that's the irony. I mean, not only that, you know, and again, I share this from La Place of Love because, you know, uh, a, a month before he passed away, uh, you know, he said, I'm sorry. And he said, I love you, right? Those are two things that I had wanted him to say for my entire life, right? For his entire, for as long as, you know, I've been his son, right? And he finally said it and I had closure so I can speak freely about it, sure. uh, but, uh, and not from a place of uh, this is, he did this in victimhood, right? Let it go. But, with that being said, you know, uh, I remember being in my senior year and there was an open call for the movie Newsies. And, uh, you know, I went, I told my school and I went with a girlfriend of mine who, uh, you know, she was one of my best friends and her dad took us. And I told my grandmother, <laughs> you know, uh, cause I'd be missing school. And I wind up getting, I stayed the entire time. I kept all the cuts and I kept making it and making it. And it wound up being the end of the day, like about, I think I was there from like seven in the morning until about eight at night. <laughs> and they said, so now we need your parent <laughs> here because, you know, and I was like, oh God, because they wanted me, to, they wanted uh, me to go to Florida, you know, and to do a screen test. And my dad would just flip. And it was, that I think is when I knew how different we were. Because in that moment, you know, I, I, I knew I was gay, which has nothing to do with this story in a sense, but it does um, because that was a lot of our conflict as well of me suppressing all of that. But it was, I just felt you don't want to see me move forward and succeed because you're holding on to your stuff mm. and you have a son who's actually doing it. Sure. And he was just like, no. And um, <clears throat> so I was, it was a lot, man. And um, 
And then, uh, so I didn't go down and I go to college and I get a letter from Disney, you know, asking me to then come down to audition for the new Mickey Mouse Club. And, you know, I, I passed on it because I said I was stay in school. But I, I guess I share that story because it's any parent who's listening to this, allow your, your children to be their unique individual selves. Mm. You know, especially if they're putting out good in the world, mm. you know? And it, it, it's don't try to make them into something that you missed. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Or, you know, and my dad admitted he was jealous. And my stepmother said the same thing. And that's really hard to take for, for, for someone. And I, I felt that energy. You know, and when I made my Broadway debut in Rent in 1996, uh, and it was only four years after graduating high school, because again, Trey, it was like, I'm going to do this, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um, it's, it's um, I had a determination and it was then in a show that was about everything that I was conditioned to be afraid of. I, he came and he actually saw me on a Broadway stage. And anyone who's known me since forever knew that, wow, he manifested that. Because that's all I ever wanted to do is to have a Broadway career. That is some powerful stuff. Like what, all right, so not only are you on Broadway, like mm -hmm. your, your biggest dream, yeah. but your dad is in the audience. My dad, who was against all of it, right? Was against um, all of it, right? Like yeah, the, and, the person that did not support any of that, right? Like you mm -hmm. going to a, a, um, a theatric high school or anything like that, right? But I will say, I, I'm sorry to pause you, but I will add is that he did show up at my shows. <laughs> it's the irony in, in, in uh, elementary school and high school. Mm -hmm. You know, he had his camcorder, but I believe because it wasn't the next step. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the oratorical contest and everything. And, and I know he loved me, but you can't contain someone, you can't contain someone's destiny. Wow. Because it is what it, it is that, it is that you can't, you can't control, you can't, like you said, you can't put a cap on that. No. Like it is written, it is, it is, it is going to happen regardless. Like the broad, yeah. your, your destiny to be on Broadway, like you, that is you. Right. right. And to be in, well, and to be in this industry period, right. Because yeah. I, I, I was never just an actor, you know, I, I, I was always a, a complete artist, you know, from, a, from a very young age. So it was, you know, then to be in New York and, you know, to, do have the opportunities to write and all of that, but not uh, have the window yeah. open for me or the door open for me in that way. Um, I was doing like readings, you know, I was renting the studio and going, hey guys, let's do a reading of something I wrote or where I was adapting other people's stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, people like to box you in, oh no, this is what you do. And it's like, actually, no. No. <laughs> but what like all right, so like people like to box you. I mean that's in life. People like to put you in boxes and and, and in general. I mean in general. general. Yeah, yeah. I mean you could say that about anybody, right? Like I mean yes, you see a lot yes. of actors too, like get put in boxes where they're only this person, right? Like And I think favorite. that's changing. Yeah. That's changing. How do you overcome that as an individual? You overcome it by overcoming. You overcome it by believing in yourself. You overcome it by not listening to any outside forces that are saying to you, no, you can't. Or giving you this, oh, well, you're just a, no. That actually makes me go even further. <laughs> that actually drives me. Um, you know, I've written three plays and it's, you know, I'm also a director, all of these things, but I'm someone who I have not been given opportunities to direct, uh, not, not in a full capacity, uh, but my play that my 
play that was produced last year, I said, I'm going to direct this, mm -hmm. you know, and because I knew what I was doing, <laughs> you know, yeah. and um, I, well, you, you look know, at it like your baby too, right? Like that's your baby. Like people, like entrepreneurs look at businesses, like their he, startups as their babies. And like you've yeah. written this play, this play, and you're like, I'm directing this bad boy. Like this is it. Like I know well, how to direct and I know uh, how to, I know how to portray this too. Like I know where I, what my message is and I know what the my, vision, yeah, the, the vision. vision, but you know, I didn't set off, set out to direct it, you know, um, but it just happened that way. And I'm glad that I did because I was able to stand in, in breath and all that went with it and mm -hmm. take care of my company you know wow. yeah. but also look after myself and my play you know at the end of the day so look i mean look from where you're at right now in your seat talking to me on a podcast and, and mm -hmm. look at where you where you've come right like your entire career like look back and say man like look at the journey like look at it right oh and gosh yeah like you, people always get caught up in the success like mm -hmm. but what is success without the journey you know, like people want to jump ahead. They want to jump to the future and say, where am I going to be in five years? This is people want to take the elevator. And oh. I say the elevator to success is broken. Take the stairs. <laughs> Have you ever, like, but I mean, like the journey, right? Like you, you seem very confident. You know that you wanted to be on Broadway, but were, there, were there times where you doubted that? Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, I, I've only come into this realized new state of awakening um, the past three years uh, because I was diagnosed three years ago with a, um, a neurological condition called spasmodic dysphonia, mm. where it, uh, the brain is inter interrupts your vocal cords and you have spasms. And I was in the throes of this big Broadway show, Come From Away, that I had been fortunate to be a part of from the ground up. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, what's happening here? I could barely talk and let alone sing. And I had been with the show for three years prior to us going to Broadway. And it was the most horrific time in my life, like an actor's nightmare, right? Uh, and, but it was also the most confident that I had ever felt in New York, mm. ironically, because all I had was myself you know and i left the show because i literally could not sing anymore i had my first round of botox injections to my throat uh to stabilize the spasms and it knocked out my singing voice completely and i was told by doctors and and a therapist that uh i would never be able to sing again and that i would not regain uh, a full speaking voice and it wasn't until my father passed Mm. On March 12th, 2018, I woke up that morning and I could speak. What? So this is why I shared with you the journey with my father and I. Yeah, yeah. And I could speak. And, and it was, oh, okay, this is, this is a miracle, but I don't fully believe it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you know, and, um, and I actually could sing at his funeral but I couldn't sing anything else for a little bit. But yeah. I could sing at his funeral. And then last year I was able to do two musicals. It was short runs, but every day I was like, oh man, am I gonna have this nightmare happen again? And you know, so I didn't have my uh, confidence internally, but externally I had, I, I didn't tell anybody that inside I was low key suffering, right? <laughs> you know, where I was like, man, is this gonna happen? But what it did for me, I knew that I could do it. Hmm. And all I had to do was tell the story. All I had to do was tell the story. And I was able to do it and state the truth of it. And now, you know, a year later, I can sing, you know, and I'm now getting out of my own way in that belief system that I can't. It's like, you know, people who have been heavy set for a long time mm -hmm. and then they lose a lot of weight mm -hmm. and but and I say this from a lot of my friends who who've shared the story with me and they're like man yeah I look like this now but when I look in the mirror it's very hard for me to actually see that and believe it and so 
that it's that same, same kind of thing. It's like, you know, so once I got over that, which takes therapy, which takes really retraining your mind, reprogramming your mind to know that this is a do-over. This is a start over. Anytime you come from any kind of trauma and you survive that shit, I, I believe you can go anywhere. I really yeah. do. I believe that you can go anywhere. And if you look at all of the people who are uh, people in our world who are, um, you know, these beings of light and all of these things, uh, it took trauma for them to have that breakthrough. No, I agree. I think it's- um, In a it healing of that. It sucks. It just sucks. It takes yeah. freaking trauma. You know what I mean? Like, and some people it doesn't, you know? Some people yeah. it doesn't. But I think it's trauma or a wake-up call, right? Trauma yeah. or, or, or some kind of wake-up call that, you know, and for me, it was spasmodic dysphonia, where I believe the universe, <laughs> I like to say, you know, God slapped me and said, sit down, Job. I'm going to transform you into Lazarus. <laughs> you know, whether you believe in, in, in that or not, but it's, it's like, I fully believe that that is what the universe said. Sit down, Job. I'm going to transform you into Lazarus. I would love to know what you felt when, well, I guess you felt like a lot of different things, right? Like your dad had just passed, which is, you know, it was tough anyway, but then you could it was tough. sing or you could talk again. It was like, so, so conflicting. It was so weird, right? Like, <laughs> Trey, it was so conflicting. It was like, but then there, it was a release. It was a release, you know, because I, I, it's interesting. No matter what in my relationship with my father, I always loved him. Mm. And I literally just wanted him to love me. That is, don't we, don't we all though? Don't I we mean, all just on. want somebody yeah. to love us? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, we yeah. just want our dads to love us. Like that's yeah. all. So if you're, if you got a kid and if you're a father, just love your kid. Like, just yeah. Love yes. You know, and, and it's, it sounds so easy, but you know, and, and I'm grateful to be a really great uncle and I have God uh, nieces and nephews and uh, you know, I'm a godfather. And so that fuels my heart, sure. you know, and, um, and, and I'm just, I'm proud of my journey, Trey. <laughs> I, yeah, I, you know, you, I, you I should I, be, I mean, I mean, it was intense. It was a lot, you yeah. know, but I and we I, all should be proud of our journeys, right? Like it's we our, should, it's, it's our individual journey. It's, it is proud of the overcoming too, because, you know, I believe, you know, we have to unlearn, you know, as adults, we literally have to unlearn, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I think that, you know, the world is doing that now, really, you know, but um, I personally had to just unlearn a lot of crap you in think order. Think about this, Rodney, right? Yeah. Like, and I don't mean to cut you off, but no, we, please. We, we are born, right? We are mm -hmm. born to a set of parents that have no there, there no edu not education, but no knowledge of how to be parents, right? Mm -hmm. Like everybody's just kind of winging it, <laughs> and we're programmed by society. We're programmed by neighborhoods. We're programmed by you know, the towns that you live in, the cities that you live in, to to believe in certain things. And then you, I mean, that's our entire lives. Is like I'm, I've been, I've had this awakening inside of me. Yeah. I'm 37 years old, um, and before this time, I believed in a set of rules. I believed in a set of rules that I could not do. I could not break these rules because it was bad. Mm. However, with this awakening, with the knowledge that I'm gaining every day, mm. Mm. it is becoming more aware to me that there is not, there's two choices in this world. There's only two. One, you can love or you can fear. Yes. Yes. And yeah. they, are, they are the deciding factors of what you're going to do in this world. Yes. And you know, Ooh, it's fear can take you down some crazy roads, you know, and love, love can enlighten the crap out of you. And it, it's love is complex, you know, and it's so multifaceted, but love, man, that, I won't trade that energy for the world. Yeah. And I'm, I'm 46 now, you know, and so, mm -hmm. I'm you like, look good, no. man. You look good. Oh, 46. Thank you. I was going to say 38. Come on, man. 
Ah, uh, I appreciate on, you, Ronnie. man. No, I, I'm 46. <laughs> and, you know, it's interesting you say that because when I, 10 years ago, I didn't, I looked stressed out, mm -hmm. you know, because I was holding in so much uh, depression energy and all of these things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and when I began uh, my practice of meditation and, and, and love practice, it just, you just, I don't know, it, things just take over, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. And I didn't so even know I'm, what energy was, man. Like, I didn't know what that was. Like, I didn't, I didn't, like, it's so crazy to think about. Like, I, so I'm going back to school, right? Like, I'm getting my business degree. Yes. And Congratulations. Taking, thank you. I'm going back for psychology as a minor. And the more mm. that I learn about psychology, the more things that I learn, the more I love it, the more it's sparking my curiosity. I, I always say, if you don't know what you want to do, just what are you curious about? Follow that. And I'm learning that like as human beings, like we think we see everything in this world, but do you know the limited spectrum of colors that we can actually see? That the, like think about the perceptions that other animal forms can, like the bats or dogs or cats, like we don't perceive everything in this world. We can't even see frequency or, or, or gamma rays. Like there are just so many different things happening in this world that we are, we are just ignorant to. But I we agree. think, but we think that we know everything. Mm -hmm. We think that mm -hmm. we know what's going on because mm -hmm. our minds, our egos say, this is what's happening. You're right and they're wrong. And it's Oof. not that at all. It's not that at all. And I believe that you just, it's interesting. There's a healthy ego mm -hmm. and there's the ego self. And then there is, I am no thing. <laughs> And that, you know, I, I repeat that a lot in my, as a mantra in my meditations, I am no thing. And for me, it's like, because you also have to get to the point where you have to be confident mm -hmm. in yourself, because if you're not confident in yourself, no one's going to do it for you. Yeah. Well, even as a creator, right? Like, oh my gosh, like even as oh, a creator. you have to be, you have to be. And, and I just stepped into that, you know, of, of just going, you know what, this is what I have to offer. And this is all the experience I have to bring to the table. And um, if I don't believe it, who's going to? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing too, right? Like mm -hmm. I was, I was listening. It's kind of crazy, right? So I, I get up and I run. That's what, mm. that, that's what filters my soul in the morning. That's the kind of like clears mm. the crud off my mind. It's what, how I get into these, these mind states so I can meditate later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I listen to, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to admit this on air. So <laughs> don't laugh too hard. I listened to this, 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 yeah, or not Yahoo, uh, Yahoo, uh, YouTube channel. And it's, um, it's got like, um, some like pretty positive and you know inspiring like playlists of music and and like of talks and Lady Gaga is actually on there and she mm. talks about being an artist right and she talks about how a lot she's of the real man oh, keep going dude uh -huh. she is uh you know she asks she Force. somebody asks her about what is the most important thing about being an artist and she's like you have to silence the noise you Ooh. have to be able to go within like you have to cut the noise out and know that the only person that's going to validate your work is you and that. Bam. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, that is the, yes, yes, yeah. I, it's interesting. I just wrote a Facebook post about that, almost about that this morning. And about, you have to self-validate mm -hmm. because no one's going to do it for you. And you have to clear away the noise mm -hmm. and, let it all go. And it, it, it's, you know, I mean, with everything going on in our world, you know, I made, I think my, one of my last Facebook posts for a little bit. <laughs> um, you I'm know, not going there anymore, man. I can't, I can't go on that. Brother, it, it, it's, you know, I, I, you know, I, I have, come under the teachings of Thich Nhat Hanh and Pema Chodron and mm -hmm. all of these magnificent souls and Michael Beckwith, uh, who I, oh my gosh, if you don't know Michael Beckwith, I think you would just bliss out on this man. Um, he has, uh, he has many books, but two books that I recommend is uh, Spiritual Liberation 
and uh, life visioning. Trey, it is going to blow your mind because yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe that you're in that space. You're going to go, what? <laughs> it's like a page turner. And it's also an audio books if, oh, if, yeah. you know, for people who aren't readers. And I love doing both, you know, but I really love audio books. Oh, I love them. I love them yeah. to death. Take your walk and you can yeah. hear the, the author read to you. Um, but Michael Beckwith, so it really is about who are you? Who do you want to be? You know, and for me, it was like, who, who, who is Rodney Hicks? Who do I want to be? Who mm -hmm. do I want to be in this world that is on fire <laughs> right now? Mm -hmm. It's how do I want to stand? Do I want to be gasoline? Or do I want to be able to walk through that fire and not get burned, but walk through it with my own being and what I have to offer and know that that is enough? Hmm. And I choose that. That's powerful. That's, powerful. Lot, I mean, that's so powerful because a lot of us just want to, it's like, we're just, we're just so scared. Yeah. Scared. Well, scared to put ourselves out there. And I'm going to tell you, brother, I was scared for a very long time to put myself out there, even though I was on Broadway and doing these things and doing television. And I was terrified of living. I was terrified of living, you know? Um, and, and it was, you know, you're talking to someone who wanted to, like, not be here some years ago. Mm -hmm. And to go, wow, okay, that would have been like, I would have missed out on so much, you know? And, and I What do you mean that. not be here? Are you talking about taking your own? Oh, yes, Life. you know, and I say that freely because sure. we're in a world where, you know, say it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because that's going to, I believe, help somebody who may be listening and who may, you know, we don't know where people are in their lives. Sure. Maybe, wow. Okay. If that person, uh, you know, survived that themselves, survived themselves, yeah. then so can I. I mean, and you go back to, this is a great uh, segue into Mighty Oak, you know, where this movie for me came out of nowhere. If this movie came 2018, when I decided to, 2018, when I decided to go back into the industry after losing my voice and everything, Trey, I was auditioning all through 2018 and mm. I wasn't booking anything. Mm. And that was a little odd for me, you know? Yeah. I'm like, wow, I'm not moving forward at all. and. It was around November where I thought to myself, I wrote it in my journal, okay, if I don't book anything this year, then this is probably not for me. But, and I had already been a college professor. I had already started my own business, all of those things, right? And to know that, ah, I'm good on that, I've done that. I knew that if this is my purpose, being an artist, not just an actor, but being a writer, being a, all of these things, if that is my purpose, then something needs to come through by the end of this year. <laughs> and, and, and I wrote that down and it was like, because I will look for something else to do. Yeah. And I knew it would be something completely opposite of anything I'd ever done. But I was willing to jump off that cliff and literally, uh, I believe the next week I get a call. Uh, my friend Frank Reagan, who's one of the exec producers, said, there's a role in this film that I think you'd be great for. Would you want to put yourself on tape? And, and I'm like, uh, yes. He didn't know that I was low key going, I'm never going to work again, mm -hmm. right? Feeling that. And because I thought, well, people are going to be afraid. What is spectrumonic dysphonia, da, 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 you know? And it was the most amazing shoot, you know, working with these people. And I got that job. When I found out I, I got the job was New Year's Eve. Yeah. So again, manifestation and allowing whatever's supposed to be to be. I love that. Speaking of the movie, which we haven't yeah. talked about yet, what you yes. just did, but Mighty Oak, he played D DB, right? And yeah. Mighty Oak. Mm -hmm. It's about reincarnation, which I love. Um, Me too. Me too. Yeah, you know I mean, like it's just crazy. Like I just, I just think it's crazy. Um, and and you be obviously you believe in it, right? Like you believe in reincarnation. 
You know, I believe that there is life after this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I won't know until I get there. Sure. Right. But, but you I like do. to think that, right? Like oh, you yeah. Think that. I believe that energy continues and that, you know, it could be in the form of a flower. It could be in the form of a butterfly. But I do believe that the presence of people who have been in our life, in the physical, um, I do believe that we do somehow go into a non-physical state of being. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's all I know. <laughs> you know, I listen to Abraham Hicks a lot too. Abraham you know? Hicks. Oh, wow. Esther Hicks, right? Esther Hicks, yes. Abraham. You Abraham. know what's funny is I just started listening to her like three days ago, four days ago. I didn't Ooh. even know. I didn't even know. I didn't oh, even know. Oh, Trey. Is and, it that powerful? Is it that? Oh, is it, keep listening. Keep listening yeah. because Abraham unlocks so many doors of awakening and being and you know, it, it, it's, I was meditating to Abraham and doing Qigong and just really. So what do you suggest for me, right? Like, what should I read next or listen to? Like, what do you suggest? Abraham, YouTube, Michael Beck with YouTube. I mean, like, because they all come from the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but Abraham is a non-entity. Abraham is in the non-physical and it's a channeling. Michael Beck with his channeling is in a whole other kind of way. When you watch this man, you know that, of course he has his bullet points, right? But the way things come through him, my God, I am just like, I am literally, I cannot stop listening to this message because awesome. it's not self-serving. Yeah, yeah. You ever listened uh, or read uh, Paul Selig at all? No. Paul Selig is a friend of mine. He's a very great dude. Um, he just, he, he channels and um, he's, what is his latest book? Alchemy was an eye opener, was, was a heart opener for me. I know Alchemy. I didn't know that was Paul Selig. Yeah, Paul Selig, Alchemy. I have it in back of me, actually. <laughs> hey, really? I do believe so. Sorry, the essence no. moment. Anyway, He's, I'm sorry. No, yes. you're great. Um, my f the 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 one thing that I talk about that book that really made me that opened my heart was literally uh, a, a you know he channels from the guides. He has a, these mm. guides that he talks to, mm. and I didn't understand it fully. The more that I become more aware of what we are and what we truly are, and 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 you know who knows what we really are, but I like to believe that we are the source. The more that I understand that, and the more that I research and listen to a lot of these great people, and and you know have conversations with yourself, the more that I can understand his books. And there was a section mm -hmm. in that that was talking about love, and it's you know the Christ that is us, right? He talks about the resurrection of the Christ, of the Christ, it, mm -hmm. of the Christ. It's it's you know, and a lot of people talk about the second coming of Christ. A lot of religious folks. Um, and you and, know, religion and spirituality are yeah, so two, different. Two, yeah, yes. two different things. I believe that the second coming of Christ is, is the awakening inside of us. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, he talks about the resurrection of Christ, mm -hmm. the, the, the actual idea of that. So picture Christ breaking down that tomb and coming out, mm -hmm. right? And presenting himself as a resurrected Christ. He talks about that in the book and he says, Christ coming out and breaking down that wall is him coming out of your heart and showing your showing himself to the world and you loving the world for what it is that is the true acceptance the true acceptance acceptance of god in your heart is letting jesus come out and that i literally did a drop uh, like a like a drop mic on the book it's a mic drop. Like, yes and just walked away i was like i can't read anymore but it was like page 94 it's like 300 pages i had to read the rest but we most all have powerful capacity. book. I still carry that book around me everywhere I go. After we get off this, I, 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 I know it's in back of me. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Right I, have, I have Alchemy of the Heart. Alchemy of the Heart. Well, this is I have Alchemy. Alchemy of the Heart. This is his latest book. It just came out. Selig. And, okay. Yeah, Paul Selig. He's, uh, he's been I'm on here previously, and mm -hmm. he's been on Aubrey Marcus, Aubrey, you know, I, 
he's just such a good dude. Like he's just, he used to live in New York actually. Mm. Um, he just moved out to Maui um, before COVID. But I mean, I, I, li I have to read this book because he, the, it, the channeling in here, it just seems so oh, familiar. Well, I, I'm getting it as soon as we get off this podcast, <laughs> like Amazon. <done. laughs> oh, I wish you could like deliver it right now. Um, but to, to roll, like the, just the vision of that, right? Like to, to, to roll back that stone that is that cave that is inside of our heart. Like I, I, I have a hardened heart from my life, from, mm. my, from my journey, because I didn't want to trust anybody. Like I've been yes. hurt, right? Yes, so like I yes. hardened I it. overstand you. Mm -hmm. And throughout my journey, like I didn't want to give it out to anybody. Right? Yes, I didn't want anybody yes. To hurt. And yes. then I pick up this book and, and you know, I have, I'm married with kids and I love, I love, but I don't love fully. Right. Mm. Like there's always that trauma. There's always that subconscious self saying, you know, you really can't love that much mm. because you know, Trey, you've been hurt in the past. And I'm reading this book. And he's like the resurrected self on page 94, I think it is of this, of this book. And he talks about the rolling back of the rock and letting Jesus come through and shining and loving and being that Christ. And I was like, I'm done. Like, I, I, I don't love for I don't, mm. I don't until now. And now mm. it's like, I see everyone, right? Mm. I see everyone and I accept them because mm. I know what they're saying, what they're doing is not who they are. It's the, Hell. it's the small self, it's the ego. It's a lot of the stuff that you're seeing on Facebook, a lot of the stuff that you're seeing in the world, the trauma, the anger, the hate. Mm -hmm. It's not us. The confusion, um, you know, it's, yes, I agree. And, you know, I, with all of that, I then, I've learned to just go the other way <laughs> is because, you know, do not, conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's the latter, right? Trans be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, you know, it's interesting. I was someone who had, who just loved everybody, you know, but didn't have love for myself until I realized and learned how to love. And that had to start with, you have to learn to love yourself first. Mm -hmm. And then it all kind of happens from there, you know. But do we really know how to love? That's the question, and, I, and I'm sorry. I think we can, I think we can, you know, I really do. And, mm -hmm. and I think especially now in the, now we kind of have to, yeah. you know, or, or you live in anger and fear and hate, you know. I'm gonna read this passage for you because it's that Sure. Mm -hmm. You will never know God if you, discount, if you discount it in one another. You may pray to God, but until you forgive your fellows for not being who you want them to be, mm. your prayer may fall to the stone in your own heart to be released because that must come to liberate you. Mm. He asks, what, what do you mean the stone in the heart? He says, the idea of the stone that covers the cave that the Christ would rise in, roll back the stone, the risen Christ appears, roll back that which obscures the Christ and which denies the light and the resurrected self claims expression and all it knows and all it sees. Wow. You ask for forgiveness and you refuse to forgive your fellow you have to go back and forgive him first. Forgive him first. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's a, yes. <laughs> we, I mean, that's what we do in this podcast. We just, you know, we just read texts and we talk about powerful stuff. Um, mm. But how hard is that though, to forgive someone, right? Like to, if you can't even love yourself to the fullest, even the shadows that is inside of you, the dark self, if you can't even love that, how can you love another? I did that for three years. Um, I had to forgive both of my biological parents, you know, and really let all of that energy go, you know, uh, and, and realize, okay, they loved you at the level that they knew how. Mm -hmm. 
And it's like, you can't hold that against them. And once I released that, I began to go on a different journey. Yeah. You know, and then it was then forgiving other people throughout my life, right? And then also, you know, uh, reaching back and asking for forgiveness, you know, in previous years and grateful that I was, I was received that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it, again, it all has to come from a very genuine place. It has to come from such a deep down place where you don't want anything in return, where you don't want anything in return. You know, and which is really hard, yeah. right? But it, it's, it's um, and I'm just grateful to have gotten to that place in my life. And it's like, okay, wow, I am 46. I'm a gay black, I'm a black gay man at 46 years old and I'm still alive in this world today. And I feel as though I have hopefully another 46 years on this planet or 40, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, but it's like, wow, I actually have another new beginning here and I'm in it. And so the veil of fear that used to cloud my vision and that proving energy of I'm going to be on Broadway, I'm going to be on television, I'm going to be on films, that's gone. It's like, no, I've already done that. And this is what I'm going to do and what I'm doing. Why? Hmm. Because that is my purpose. And it's not to prove anything. It's not to, you know, uh, for, for, for a monetary gain. You know, it really is because that's my, that's, I believe that that's why I'm put here. And hopefully will help people. Excuse me. And hopefully will help people. Amazing. Rodney Hicks. Like this is, like, I can't even believe it's been an almost an hour. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> how can people find out more about you? How can they, how can they connect with you? Yes, Trey. Um, Instagram. I'm on Instagram uh, at Rodney Hicks, uh, Rodney Hicks here. Awesome. I'm going to hit you up, follow you. Please do. Sure. Please do. Um, I won't be posting a lot. Um, I, I say that and then I start posting again. <laughs> well, you so, weren't even supposed to do this interview, but not, you, know, you know. I know, I know, you know, but I, you know, hey, I, I kind of go with the source. I go with source yeah, and I go with the buddy. spirit. Yeah, buddy. You we know? need people, but you know what? We, Rodney, we need your positivity out in the world. We, we need to see your feed of positivity to help, you know, guide us. You know what I mean? Mm. You know? Thank you. So, um, last question, kind of powerful. Um, what is, what is going to be Rodney Hicks's legacy when it's all said and done? Wow. Um, what is going to be Rodney Hicks's legacy? Rodney Hicks never gave up. Hmm. Oof, about to cry a little bit. Um, Rodney Hicks never gave up on himself. Hmm. He never gave up on himself. And um, yeah, I mean, I've had so many ample opportunities to give up on myself and, and to settle and, and to make shrink and make myself small. And I think this man never gave up and he always believed in love, mm. you know, uh, even when love wasn't given to me, you know, um, it's, um, you know, I will always support people, uh, that, that's just, I just will, um, that's just part of who I am and I will always be there for people, but anyone who doesn't want to support me or be there for me. I am not mad at all. Um, I've released that. Um, and I'm not trying to be better than anybody. I'm just trying to be better than the person I was yesterday. Oh, man. You know, this is, this is like the whole premise of this show. Like you, you, 
seriously, it's crazy. Um, I named the show after Ernest Hemingway's famous quote. Um, True nobility is not being superior to your former man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. Yes. Hence, your superior self. Yes. 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 It, it's, you know, the only competition is the person you're looking at in the mirror. That is the only competition, you know, and I think as people, we, we compare ourselves to everybody and it's like you know i stopped wearing regular people's clothes <laughs> i like to call it you know i wear shirts that are kind of down almost to my knees mm -hmm. you know and loose fitting because i don't care anymore mm -hmm. about what anyone thinks of me mm -hmm. because i know what i think of myself mm -hmm. and i know that i want to walk this world gently I want to walk this world confidently with both feet on the ground in the best way that Rodney Hicks knows that he can. And I'm not trying to take anything away from anybody. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Rodney Hicks, this has been impressive. Thank you so much. Make sure that you guys go out and watch his new movie, Mighty Oak. Um, it's about reincarnation, which I can definitely get behind. Thank you, Rodney. This has been Thank amazing. Thank you. Thank you.